Okay, there we go. Now you can hear me. Thank you all so much for coming out tonight to our 24th annual youth poetry celebration. My name, my name is Carl Connor. I'm the Arts Learning Program Coordinator here at the Arts Center. And for those parents out there, I'm the one you probably can get emails from. <laughs> Um, but we are so, so happy to be bringing this event back in person. This is the first time it's been off of Zoom since before the pandemic. So I am just so happy to see everyone's bright, smiling, shiny faces here today. Thank you all so much for being here. So, uh, in years past, um, some beloved community members uh, were really, really involved with this event, specifically uh, Courtney Cloyd and Ann Staley. Um, they've passed away in the past, in the recent years, so uh, in honor of them and their contributions to the community and the, the poetry celebration, I'm going to start us off by reading one of Anne's uh, poems, her, song, uh, her own poem, and then we will get going into our youth poems. All these amazing kiddos have been working very hard to present to you all. Okay, I'm going to kick this off with Willamette Valley, late March. I know it's April, but it's pretty close. Winter rain in the Cascades, days and nights of its arriving on Pacific winds, of cool mist or piling up, gunmetal clouds along the ridges. If you come to this western valley, prepare for wet blessings, 28 kinds of moss and lichen, rust, moisture-soaked ferns, puddles outside your doorway, a succession of umbrellas you lose and find in for lost and found days. You stay inside with a steaming cup and the book you've been meaning to read, the one your brother sent for your last year's birthday. At night, when the cars and people settle, when the cats are sleeping on our laps and there is nothing, nothing you can do to avoid your life, the ghosts, the voices, your mirth itself. Take comfort in the sound of rain, the great privacy of water falling, its belief in gravity, its faith in the hereafter, and stealing. Thank you all so much. All right. So our very uh, first and brave young poet uh, is going to come up and read her poem. Sky, you want to come on up? So tell us your name and the name of the poem. Hello, my name is Sky, Sky Kellogg, and this poem is called My Earth. Would it be a poetry reading without some technical things? Because the earth is full of life. If we move away from nature, we will become unnatural. Thank you so much, Sky. Go ahead, have a seat. And I'm going to ask for our next youth poet who's feeling ready. My name is Valerie De Los Reyes, and my poem is called Fire Building. I gather up sticks and twigs, fragments of branches, dry brush, and wood full of resin I found in a tree stump. I stack it all together carefully, stick by stick, twig by twig, and place the tinder underneath, with gaps for the air to flow. All my life I spend waiting for a spark to drift by on the wind and find my sticks and twigs and catch and light. And then I fan the flames, 
I nurture the fire. I help it to grow into a blaze of beauty. I share it with the world. I keep it in my heart so it will never go out. Then I search for wood again and wait for another spark to find me. All the time I spend waiting for a spark to drift my way. Maybe I'd better learn to use flint and steel. <laughs> Adele and the tail of my phone was broken. I was racing down the slope, having fun, enjoying myself, <coughs> so carefree, feeling like nothing can go wrong. But I was not exempt from the rules. It happened so quickly. With one fall, I lost everything so dear. Inside lost, I needed to accept it. Sitting, imagining others doing what I should be doing. I cried. Now isolated from everything I love. My name is Matilda Regan, and my t the title of my poem is Red. A flash of bright red on a cruel summer morning, a flicker flies by. She devoted that day to watching the garden. She watched, she watched butterflies fly. She watched mantises pray. She watched plants grow. She watched squirrels run to and fro. She devoted that day to watching the garden because she wanted to understand it. She wanted to understand it because the thing that holds our world together is understanding, even if the thing we're understanding is just a garden. Lots and lots, some with yellow, some in knots, with rainbow colors as you see all the colors to see. All right, you still want my going next? Como suena, and my name is Ada Bonta. Me gusta como suena en mi boca, like a soft, sweet lullaby. Me gusta como siente, como una derrota de un tambor. It holds a steady beat and matches with my folks. Cada sílaba es suave, como la melodía de una canción. Pero algunos son más fuertes, como las voces de los mariachis. It opens doors to a new world to explore. 
and a million opportunities. Es tan preciosa, but it's hard to want to hold on to. Cada vez es más difícil, porque para tener esta oportunidad necesito sacrificiar otros. Maybe it's not worth it. Tal vez no voy a usar, pero sé que para mí es todo, and I can't give it up. See the stem on the bottom, see the girls in nice straight lines, see the ring so curvy, so wiggly. A mushroom is a forest spirit, a little table for a little squirrel. A mushroom is a tiny phone connected to a tree. A mushroom is a magic button. Alright, I think we got through everybody who's wanting to read today. Okay, can we get one last final round of applause for all of our awesome players? <laughs> and in case you didn't see, all of the original poems are hanging in our Perrin Woodman Gallery. And some of these kiddos did some fantastic artwork that goes with these poems. So definitely check those out before you leave tonight. Um, all right, I'm going to invite all of our youth poets up on the stage, and I'm going to give you all your prize for participating. Thank you so much for being here. Come on up. Come on up. <laughs>